G'day there guys, it's your main man Marky, back at it again with another episode of r slash Entitled People. Now if you love this content, I want you to sit back, relax, chuck a prawn on the barbie, and enjoy the content. Posted by user Zaru77, titled, My mum's entitled friend thinks she can control my hobbies. So this story is a thing that happened a week ago, and I'm still mad. My mum decided to let us invite friends over again, now that the government let us, with the pandemic, damn it. So my mum decided she would invite her friends over first. I mean, sure, why not? Little did I know that my mum was gonna invite her extremely nosy friend. Let's call her Karen for obvious reasons. Anyways, Karen comes over and her and my mum start talking. So far, there's no problem. Then my mum goes to cook dinner. So of course, her being intrusive and nosy, Karen barges into my room without knocking. Note, I barely know this lady, and asks what I'm doing and stuff, you know, the usual small talk. At this point, I'm not annoyed because I like conversation anyways, and she isn't saying anything harmful, so I start telling her what I'm doing. So here's the entitled part. Some backstory. Since a few months now, I've taken a strong interest in learning languages. I just find it to be a very fun and relaxing hobby, so it carried on for a while. So I tell her I'm learning Dutch, and that so far, I've already learned Portuguese, thinking she would do the usual adult thing, where she asks some questions and makes some small talk, you know? But no, she starts saying stuff like, wow, you're learning all these languages, yet you can't even write in your own native language? I'm Pakistani, so technically Urdu is my native language, but... I was born in Canada, and only speak Urdu with my mother, so I'm extremely rough in terms of pronunciation and can't write. Now, I didn't think she meant badly, so I simply explain this is just a fun hobby I've taken a liking for, and learning writing in Urdu would be extremely difficult, because it's totally different than any language I can already write, and it would be more frustrating than enjoyable. She proceeds to get mad at how learning other languages is slowly salvaging my heritage, or some BS like that. At this point, I don't see the need to continue this argument, so I simply respond, sure, I'll think of it, thinking that's the end of it. But no, it's not. She continues to tell me how I need to drop my current language project and prioritize my native language because I'm destroying my culture. Luckily, my mum saved me when she called us down for dinner. Once we started eating, Karen was still offended as to why I wasn't learning Urdu, and she was until she left. Once she left, my mum told me, sorry about that, she can be strange at times. I'll try to keep her away from you next time. Dang, I love my mum. Posted by user, I just want to be happy. Titled, Girl believes she should be dating my boyfriend because he used to like her before he even met me. So, for all of sophomore and junior year, my boyfriend had a crush on this girl. Let's call her Nee. They had classes together, and he would always flirt with her and ask her out, but she would always reject him. My boyfriend met me at the end of our junior year, and he instantly liked me. But at the time, I didn't have feelings for him and saw him as my best friend. We would always hang out with each other, and he would always post me on his stories when we hung out, which was every single day almost, which later I found out Ni nee would obsessively watch. And it wasn't until the end of our first semester of senior year when we started dating. Fast forward to the end of senior year, when it's grad nights, senior Disneyland trip. My boyfriend was leaving for the army in a few months, so I said it was fine if he only hung out with his friends because I wanted him to make those memories with those friends he's had since kindergarten and we had the rest of the summer to do things anyway. So I hung out with my best friend, let's call her Anna, and her friend group, which just happened to include Ni. Nee. Bit of background, for the past two years, Anna has always told me about Ni, nee, who would always start drama, hurt her friend's feelings, make fun of them, used religion to justify calling them tramps, etc. But when I met Ni nee on grad night, I didn't really talk to her, but I thought she was nice and treated her nicely. For that entire day, I was alone with her for at max 30 minutes, and not once did the topic of my boyfriend come up. I didn't even know she was friends with my boyfriend, or that she even knew who I was, because I literally met her hours before. 
The next day, my boyfriend was acting weird to me, and finally he asked me, are you mad at me? Me being confused as hell, I was like, no, what, why? And he says, well, Ni nee told me that I ruined your grad night by not hanging out with you, and that you, she said that you told her that you were mad at me, and that I'm a bad boyfriend. I immediately call Anna and tell her what's up. She then tells me for that the entirety of senior year, Ni nee was going around to my friends trying to find dirt on me. If I've screwed anyone over, backstabbed, bullied, etc., so she could tell my boyfriend, so he would break up with me. But since I was a total loner and didn't talk to anyone, that backfired on her. So she started making up lies. There was like three days me and my boyfriend were on a break, and she said while she was in their sixth period class, my boyfriend who sat next to her leaned over and told her he really wanted to kiss her, and said he told her other stuff like that. At first, I believed it, but then I realized my boyfriend wasn't even in school for the times she said he told her those things. Anna said for the entire time me and my boyfriend were dating that Ni nee would always flirt with him and my boyfriend either noticed and didn't respond, or just didn't realize it at all, and didn't respond, so she saw no reason to tell me because he never reciprocated that behavior to her. Ni nee would always screenshot text conversations with my boyfriend out of context and want Anna to show me to make me jealous, but when Anna would see the entirety of their conversations, it's extremely obvious he wasn't flirting. Ni nee would tell her friends how much she wanted to grind her ass on my boyfriend at school dances, and when her friends called her out on it, she'd always be like, oh, I always forget that he has a girlfriend. Finally, she snapped and told her friend group slash Anna that I'm a tramp for stealing her man, and that because I friendzoned him for like eight months, I didn't deserve him, and that she deserves him because she actually cares about him, and he liked her way before he even met me, so she should get first dibs. Like, girl, you friendzoned him for almost two years, of course he moved on. You missed your chance, too bad. After that situation, where many other things happened, her friends finally realized what a horrible person she was and ditched her, so now she doesn't have any friends, but she still has the audacity to tell the one friend that stuck by her that I'm the reason she has no friends, like she wasn't a horrible person and did it to herself. My situation just happened to be the last straw for her friends to stop hanging out with her. Joke's on her. Me and my boyfriend are still going strong a year and a half after that whole thing happened. Posted by user CrewDog3950, titled, Entitled Customer Demands a Refund, and Karma Got Him in the End. This happened a few years ago while I was working as an assistant store manager for a big box automotive retail store. I wrote this down right after it happened. No names were used, of course. English is my first language, Apologies for any formatting errors, and this is a bit on the long side. TLDR at the end, so let's get on with it. Me is me, the assistant store manager. CW is co-worker, SM is store manager, DM is district manager, EC is the entitled customer, PO is police officer, and the DA is the district attorney. I was working the afternoon slash evening shift as I often did. It's just a normal day, and customers are coming and going. Early on in my shift, EC comes into the store and picks out a set of headlights that he thinks will work for his car. I offered to check and see if they were the right ones, as I didn't want him to be inconvenienced to have to do a return later if he had picked out the wrong item. He declined and said he was in a hurry, and he knew that he had the right item and just stopped wasting his time. I cashed him out, and he went on his way. Before leaving, I informed him that our company policy was that if any electronic item were opened, that it could not be returned. About an hour later, EC comes back to the store, demanding a refund that I sold him the wrong product. I again informed him of the policy, and asked if he had opened the product and tried to install it on his vehicle, to which he said yes. He then made a smart ass comment about, don't you know you have to open it to see if it works? In no way, shape, or form did I have an attitude when I told him that if he would have let me do my job and look up the part, that he wouldn't be in this situation. Apparently, this ticked him off. He left the store for a few minutes, I assumed to calm down, then came back and told me that he bought the right product at our competitor and wanted his bloody money. 
I told him that I could not complete a return for him. I pointed at the return policy on the counter. He said he didn't give an F, he wanted his effing money, or there would be hell to pay. I told him he was no longer welcome at the store, and he needed to leave, to which he refused. I told him that if he didn't leave, I would call the police and have him arrested for trespassing and causing a disturbance. He said, F you, call him, I don't give an F, I want my $20. Unbeknownst to him, a co-worker was already on the phone with the police dispatch, telling them that we had an unruly customer in the store and refused to leave. EC finally realized he wasn't going to bully me into giving him the return and started to walk out while saying, don't let me catch your BS outside of here. I'm going to, whoa, shoot you, dear Lord. Coworker was telling dispatch everything that was happening. Entitled customer finally left, and a few minutes later, I heard the crackling of a police radio in the distance. Coworker was telling the police officer that I was the one involved and to talk to me about the incident. Police officer came over to me and asked for and ran my credentials, also asking for the details of the incident. I told police officer what happened and told him we have it on security camera also. I offered to show him the incident on and give him a copy as we would be pressing charges. Police officer looked at the footage of the incident and took a copy for evidence purposes. He wrote the report and had me, co-worker and a few others co-workers write statements as to what happened. Police officer asked if I knew the entitled customer's name. I told him I did and could also provide his address and phone number as it was in our computer system for warranty purposes on other items. When I told police officer entitled customer's name, he said, I know who he is. He's a bad dude and do not take this threat lightly. I told him I wanted to press charges for terroristic threats, trespassing and disorderly conduct. As per company policy, I had to write an incident report for the trespassing and the police officer showing up. I also notified the store manager and district manager immediately after the police officer left. Towards the end of the shift, police officer came back to the store and informed me that they arrested EC on outstanding warrants and the new charges. He told me that the DA would be in touch with me about testifying in court. A few months later, the DA called me and asked for me to come into their office to have a recorded interview and to bring any witness statements that I had, and I did as requested. Once EC's court date got closer and I was preparing myself to go testify, I received a call from the DA telling me the charges were dropped, that I didn't have to testify in court. I asked why EC's charges were dropped, and he told me that EC had made a plea deal and that the charges from his warrants were going to put him in prison for a long time. Being curious, I asked DA what the charges were from EC's warrants, and he told me, I cannot release that information at this time. I asked when his court date was going to be, that I wanted to try and be there. Luckily for me, I wrote the schedule at work, so when I found out the date, I gave myself that day off. I went to court and found out that EC had been charged with first degree murder, conspiracy to commit murder, felon in possession of a firearm, and all the charges that go with it, and multiple drug related charges. He was found guilty on all charges and is currently serving life without parole. After the court case, I thought to myself that somehow I had a hand in helping catch this guy. Police officers didn't know where he was until I gave them EC's address. But to think that they got the information over a $20 return that couldn't be made? Ah, <sighs> I know eventually the police officers would have caught him most likely over something stupid like a blown headlight. Karma wins again. Posted by user Val0719, titled, The time I supposedly invited a complete stranger to dinner. One day I was grocery shopping and I had gotten to the checkout. I loaded all my groceries onto the belt and was watching the cashier do her thing when the wild Karen made herself known. Apparently, she did not approve of the bottle of cooking sherry that I had planned to add to my pot roast. She says, Eh, you shouldn't use that stuff. You should go get real sherry. That stuff just tastes terrible. Okay. Karen starts in criticizing the other groceries she doesn't approve of, going on and on about how this is nasty and that is awful. I had finally had enough and say, I'm sorry, I forget sometimes, but when were we introduced? 
I only ask because I honestly can't remember inviting you to dinner. The cashier got this huge grin. Karen moved to a different checkout. Edits, I live in a dry county. It's not really worth it to drive two counties over to find a liquor store. Not for pot roast. Posted by user tpabarayzarays, titled, Entitled Grandma Let's Toddler Walk Across Our Property and Jump Into Our Pool. So this was like two years ago, middle of summer in Florida. All ages were at the time of the story. My, 17 male, brother, 13 male, had a bunch of neighborhood friends over, ranging from 9 to 14 in age, mostly rowdy guys. They were swimming in our pool behind our house. The pool is maybe six foot from the house on two sides of it, and is screened in. Since these aren't my friends, I was just vibing on the couch inside, but I could see the whole thing go down from where I was sitting. I also should note I live in a small middle class subdivision, and pretty much everyone has a pool. So, a grandma in her 60s, we'll call her entitled grandma, from down the street, had her grandson, three-ish, also known as entitled kid, out on a walk. Had a leash and everything, you know? The kid heard my brother's friends and decided to check it out. Entitled grandma decides to let him walk all the way back there, across our property. My mum, 50 female, was back there getting everyone towels and stuff. Entitled grandma opens our screen door for entitled kid, and he goes running in and jumps. My mum saw it and caught him before he could touch the water. Mind you, he's not in appropriate swimwear. She then tells Entitled Grandma that he can't go in the pool and please get off our property. Entitled Grandma asks why he can't swim with the other kids. My mum explains that he can't because these kids are 9 to 14 years old and her kid is 3, so it can be a bit dangerous. Also, it's her property and she said so. Hmm. E.G. was not having it and told the kid to jump in. My mum blocked him and they finally left grudgingly. Posted by user Taito Quich, titled, Cousin and Uncle Thought They Were Entitled to My Grandpa's Money. Three stories in one about my uncle, his son, my cousin, and their feelings of entitlement towards my grandpa for you. Can't really do a TLDR easily, but basically my uncle and cousin feel they deserve my grandpa's money without any effort to earn it. Background. My grandpa is a very stoic ex-military man, He's not great at showing emotions. A one-handed hug is the best you'll get, but if you're in trouble, he'd fight to the death for you. He's done very well for himself financially over the years, but believes in helping people to help themselves, not just giving free handouts. Story one. When I first got my driving license, I had enough money for a small old banger, but my grandpa offered to loan me 1,000 pounds to get a better car. The deal was that I had to put at least £90 a month into a savings account for a year. At the end of the year, I would give my grandpa the £1,000 back, and I could keep any extra and any interest it had earned. Two months later, my cousin got his provisional and wanted to get a small moped. My grandpa made him the same deal. At the end of the year, I went round to my grandpa's and asked him for his bank details to pay him back. He asked for proof I had the money, and I showed him my bank statements. He told me because I kept the agreement, I didn't have to repay him, and £1,000 was my reward for showing him that I could budget and save properly. Two months later, my cousin's year was up. My grandpa had to chase him about it, at which point my cousin mentioned that I'd got to keep my money, so it was only fair that he got the same. My grandpa told my cousin that if he'd done the same, he would also be allowed to keep the £1,000. It turned out... My cousin had only been putting 20 to 25 a month aside, and once he'd heard about my gift, he'd taken the whole lot out of his savings and spent it. My grandpa told him that because he hadn't kept the agreement, he now had to repay the whole lot, and for the next year, my cousin had to pay £90 a month directly to my grandpa. Story 2. Following the events of Story 1, my cousin was a bit bitter towards my grandpa and me initially, but did apologise after about a year for acting entitled to keep the £1,000, which my grandpa accepted, and they moved on. Over the next year or so, my cousin got into a lot of debt. He got evicted from several places for not paying rent, and got several CCJs, county court judgments, against him. 
He racked up a load of credit card debt and got the bailiffs chasing him. He then tried to trick our other aunt in signing as a guarantor on a payday loan with ridiculously high interest. When my grandpa found out about all of this, he took him out for a drink and offered to loan him one lump sum to clear all of his debts, and then my cousin would only have to repay my grandpa each month interest free. My cousin agreed to this, took the money, and promptly spent it on a new motorcycle for himself. My grandpa cut him off after that, and to this day they still don't speak. My cousin maintains that he was entitled to the money as we're family. Story three. About two years ago, my grandpa had a heart attack and needed a pacemaker. He's since recovered and is doing great, but at the time it really shook him. He opened up to the family about his will for the first time. My granny and grandpa had three kids, my mum, my aunt, and my uncle. My granny passed away when I was a child, and my mum died when I was a teenager. My grandpa has since remarried, but he and my stepgran agreed to keep their personal finances separate, as they both have their own businesses and investments, etc. My grandpa told us that the money is being split 30% each to my mum and my aunt, 20% to my uncle, and 20% split evenly between all kids and grandkids. The reason my uncle gets less is because he got into so much debt in his 20s that he almost had to declare bankruptcy, and my grandpa had to bail him out. My mum's share is to be split between my two sisters and I. My uncle immediately kicked off, saying that he should get the same as his two sisters. When my grandpa shut that down, he tried to claim that my mum's share would be split between him and my aunt, also rejected. His final claim was that my sisters and I shouldn't get any share of the kids 20% if we're getting our mum's inheritance. My grandpa told him to shut the hell up or he's getting nothing. We don't really talk to my uncle or cousin anymore. Hope you guys enjoyed. Sorry it turned out so long. Dear Lord. Posted by user Fred Z Red, titled Sexist Male vs. Disabled Female in a Hardware Store, I put him in his place. I'm a 29-year-old disabled female, incomplete quadriplegic with hand and arm function, and I love going to the hardware store. I don't look like the sort of person that would know her way around a hardware store, but I do. I'm always painting or making things like shelves and tables, and any furniture my friends or family needs. Most of the people at my local hardware store know me by my name, and very rarely ask me if I need help finding anything, as they know that I know these stores inside out. The only time I need help is when there's something that's too high for me to reach. On one of my outings to the hardware store, I was making a bookshelf for my friend's kid. I went in search of screws and dowels to assemble the shelf. There was a man in the same section looking lost. He was probably mid-40s. Let's call him Ken. I say, hey mate, can I help you find anything? I want to build a floating shelf, but I don't know. Well, you won't know anyway. Well, first off, you're looking at plastic sealed plugs, which is usually used for, and I was cut off. Ah, uh, uh, I think I'll find someone who actually knows what they're talking about. He walked away, and a few minutes later, returned with an employee, who was Steve. So Steve Owen's like, okay, so what you planning? Well, I want to build a floating shelf, but I'm not sure what I need. Steve, noticing me, says, Oh, hey, OP. What was it you used to make that floating shelf last month? Uh, sorry, buddy. Addressing Ken. This isn't my usual department. If you want to know what you need, you should ask OP. She knows more about this department than me. As I was saying, if you want the shelf to hold, plastic plugs won't do a great job if the shelf is going to hold weight, and it will probably rip the plywood. You need to know where the studs are in the wall, and if they're metal studs, you need the screws for metal. A floating shelf will need brackets, and you should use timber that won't warp, so MDF is the best. Ken looked so confused at my explanation, and I could see Steve trying to hold back a smirk. I spent the next half hour trying to help him get everything he needed, and explaining how to find a stud, and what timber to use. I hope he learned not to judge a book by its cover. Your gender doesn't show your abilities, or your knowledge. And I think that's where I'm going to end today's episode, guys. I hope you're having a good day, night, sleep, whatever you're up to. Say hi to Outro Marky for me.
All right, guys, that's all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this one today. Tell me what you thought of it down in the comments below. Um, if you're not subscribed to the channel, I would love you to subscribe because I love your face and I love seeing you here every single day that you are here in this video. I don't know what else to say today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the content. I do have a second channel that's called Marky2. Link should be up on the screen somewhere here if you don't have Adblock installed. Uh, if you don't know where to find the channel, you can go to my main page. Just click on the Marky face and it should be on the right somewhere there or on channels if you're on phone. Hope you guys have a good one. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.